London Heathrow. Host to 78 million passengers, nearly half a million flights, and one very unusual animal reception centre. Animals passing through Heathrow come here to be checked in. Oh, he's really cute. Also known as the Ark, it's equipped to welcome almost any species through its doors. Its feet are massive. Not that big. From reptiles and livestock to pets and predators. It's up to the Ark to make sure every one is clear to enter the country. Oh, textbook, Dan, textbook. More than 200,000 animals passed through last year alone. And its dedicated team of over 40 staff are on hand every hour of every day. Where's our water pot? And are always prepared to expect the unexpected. Ooh. <laughs> Today on Animal Airport, a dog from down under melts some hearts. Oh my god, you're so cute. A priceless pedigree falcon checks into the ark. It's got a hood on. If the hood was off, it would be trying to um, escape from the travelling container. And the team deal with a bizarre case of smuggled crabs. I mean, I've seen lobsters uh, being confiscated before. Crabs, yes, but not packaged like this. Many of the animals that fly into Heathrow Airport are collected by the reception centre staff straight from the plane. They can make 50 collections a day. And in today's trip airside, Supervisor Kaylee's on her way to fetch the latest consignment. So this is the cargo tunnel. It's the best and quickest way to get from one tunnel to another. So you can get to every single terminal via another terminal. Makes sense to have these instead of driving across runways. She's picking up an arrival that's come a long way. We're just heading to the Qantas flight, which is just literally coming on stand as we arrive. So it's perfect timing. I'm just going to park up and get out of the way. It's one of the biggest planes that we have at Heathrow. The passengers on this Airbus A380 from Sydney, Australia, have had a journey of more than 21 hours. I am picking up one border collie. So it's usually a priority when we had the Qantas flights in, we try and get them back as soon as possible because they've had the longest journey and that across any of the animals we see in the ark. A pretty long flight for the animals and the people. So we really need to get them out of the box as soon as possible just so they can stretch their legs. But with strict airside protocol, Kaylee knows she can't rush anything. I'm just going to the front and the loaders just let me know they're at the front. So there they are and they will back me up to the plane. They should do. I won't move until they do. You're not meant to ever back up to a plane unless someone there is backing you up. Driving a truck around a 300 million pound aeroplane is a nerve-wracking experience. It's scary at first because obviously it's a huge responsibility to drive around the planes and not hit the planes. It's exciting, dangerous, and especially when you tell people about it so they can't believe you. I mean, you, you park by the plane, you're looking at this like Airbus sat next to you, which is huge, and you're just sat in a little van next to it. It's a huge responsibility. It's huge. Here we go. Finally, Kaylee can collect the four-legged traveller she's been waiting for. A puppy who's been flown in by her new owners, Pete and Vonnie. We are collecting a border collie, uh, flying in from Australia. Uh, she's five months old. Uh, comes from uh, Sashdan Kennels in Australia, just outside of Melbourne. Cool. Thank you very much. But the couple still have a few more hours to wait while the pup's paperwork is processed. Excited's not a big enough word. No. It's just a dream. This, this is just what I've been waiting for, haven't I? Yes, this, is, this is a dream. Yeah. Now it's really happening. New arrivals are constantly disembarking in the loading bay. And intern Dan is in charge of the latest delivery. 
most of the time it's dogs and cats, but it's a bird this time. Um, I think it's a falcon. The falcon has flown in from Idaho in the United States and will be the latest addition to the collection of new owner Ash. We got about 100 falcons and uh, we've got a breeding project. We've got the purpose-built aviaries uh, uh, for them and also we've got a large flight pen. In the Middle East, falcon racing is a high-speed sport enjoyed by the wealthy. And a top bird can sell for around £180,000. Falcon racing took off maybe about six, seven years ago in a big way. UK produce very high quality falcons, winning most of the races in the Middle East. Thanks, buddy. Um, these two are yours. Because of the risk of diseases like bird flu and avian TB, staff must follow strict procedures with any bird, no matter how expensive it is. So to make sure he gets it right, Dan checks in with deputy manager Ross. Do I just check the box? Um, yeah, the box is right, and then probably put them in. Um, yeah, yeah. You put them in isolation. Isolation, yeah. Yeah, with the fan on, except you're in a mask. Yeah, yeah. cool. So it's important that you know that you wear all the relevant personal protective equipment to minimise any risk. The majority of zoonotic diseases from birds are airborne, so you can get them some from the feather dust of the bird, the faecal matter of the bird. I'm just going to put a mask on. So obviously, when you're in the the confined uh, environment of the bird wing. It's important that you wear a face mask. I'm just going to turn the fan on uh, so the room is ventilated. Uh, that's because of bird flu as well, because um, the virus can be shed in the feathers. So the room needs to be ventilated constantly. Before they can hand the falcon over to its new owner, the team must confirm it's had all its required vaccinations. Dan doesn't have the authority to inspect the bird on his own. So he has to call in a government vet. Hi there, it's Dan. Um, we have a falcon in. Importing birds is a lengthy process, but for falcon breeder Ash, it's worth the wait. You've got to be really passionate about the, the, the whole process, otherwise, uh, you know, if it's just a job, it won't be done. It's, you know, you've got to be really involved and, uh, with falcons uh, to, and you know, whether they breed or not, there's no guarantees. Kaylee has arrived in the loading bay with the border collie from down under. And she's already smitten. Hello, hi. Oh, you're really scared, but it's okay. It's okay, what's your name? It's a collie puppy. It's a collie puppy. Let's try and find your name. My name is... Kia. I think it's Kia. It's like Leah, but with a K. Kia. Hi, Kia. Hi, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, you're really cute. Kia doesn't know it yet, but she's going to be joining a big family. They've got uh, eight, eight borders and one Australian shepherd back at home. Pete and Vonnie are regular competitors at Crufts, and that's where they met this pup's breeders. Danny and Verno sent a dog over to, to England to be shown at Crufts, and I had a dog in there as well at the same time. And after that, we started chatting, didn't we? Yeah. And become very good friends, and um, we've been there now, what, four times over there? And uh, two years ago, Danny organised our wedding on the Gold Coast as well. It was on one of these trips that the puppy plan was hatched. I fell in love with one of her older girls, the mum of this pup. Every day we went for walks together. I just adore her. And I said, if ever you did get a chance to have a puppy, could I have a, a puppy bitch out of the out of litter? And this is, it. this is the Christmas present that, that I was promised, and it's just amazing. But they're going to have to wait a little longer than expected to meet their precious new pup. I just want to check them over because they had a long flight. I want to make sure they're actually OK. Uh, which side do you want to go? Xbox well, either side, more space. The centre is busy and Kia must wait her turn to get her passport and vaccinations checked. it gives her a chance to stretch her legs and fill her tummy. Kia! Come on! Kia! 
If you're an animal person at heart, any puppy is cute. No, you want to play? You want to play out there, don't you? Say so we're having a bad day, having a cute puppy there at the end of the day just to see for even five minutes can make it all worthwhile. Oh, hello. Oh my God, you're so cute. It's no wonder Pete and Vonnie are so excited. We've been updated with videos and um, all this sort of thing every week, every day, pictures are coming through. Just want to get hold of it out, don't they? <laughs> Heathrow's reception centre welcomes animals of all shapes and sizes from anywhere in the world. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most enter the country legally and pass through the centre to be checked over. But every year UK Border Force sees hundreds of animals that are smuggled in. And the ARC team is often called to look after them. Yesterday we got a very interesting phone call from um, Customs over at Terminal 2. Supervisor Chris was on duty. They had stopped a 12-year-old boy, uh, which is quite interesting, um, from Colombia originally. And he had some crabs with him, and they were wrapped up in an adult nappy. I don't think intentionally he brought them over as illegal or whatever, he's only 12 years old, so uh, we reckon that he just brought them over for, for food, for eating. Having spent more than 10 hours cooped up in a nappy, sadly, many of the confiscated crabs were already dead. When we were unpackaged them, there was, there was about 15 of them, all tied together, so we've, we cut the ropes, uh, got them out, and there was legs off and claws off, and. Quite sad to see. Miraculously, some survived. But Chris then had to work out what sort of crabs they were in order to have any chance of nursing them back to full health. I'm no crab expert, so species-wise, um, I took a couple of pictures, sent them off to the GC manager. The crabs were identified as Ecuadorian red swamp crabs that live in mangrove forests all along the Pacific coast from California to Peru. Armed with a bit more information, Chris worked out how to look after them. So we did a basic setup with some coarse sand and gravel in the middle, um, and then we gave them a variety of food, soaked dog biscuits, veg, fruit, things like that. And then I think in the, in the research then that they like burrowing into the sand um, or mud and then uh, eating that way. So later, I think we've got another bag of sand, so what we could do is make it a little bit higher um, for them, give them a bit of a fighting chance. I've seen lobsters uh, being confiscated before, live lobsters that people have brought back, obviously. Crabs, yes, but not packaged like this. They're usually in boxes and properly packaged so they last longer. All Chris can do now is hope the survivors pull through. In the bird wing, a falcon imported from the US needs to be checked over by a government vet before it can be allowed into the country. Do you want to handle it or shall we twist it the, the ring? We'll uh, twist it inland, I think, if we can. Yeah. Deputy Manager Tristan is on hand to help. I'm uh, looking at the travelling container at the moment. I see it's um, labelled up as a geofalcon and it's got the ring number on the front here. It's a standard plastic travelling container which appears to conform to the regulations, so that all seems to be okay. I'll have a quick look. Right, it's got a hood on. The hood keeps the falcon calm during transport. And there's the added bonus of making it easier for Tristan and the vet to inspect it. They might move around a bit, but you can't see where it's moving to, so it does tend to um, restrict their movement a bit. Um, if the hood was off, it would be trying to um, escape from the travelling container. 
The shipper has taken every precaution to ensure this expensive bird arrives in immaculate condition. The um, tail has got some cardboard on it and the wings as well. This is to protect the wings and tail feathers so they don't get damaged in transport. And there's the ring number there on the uh, right leg. The number will be used to verify that this falcon has had all its injections and is free from disease. We managed to read the uh, ring number without too many um, issues. It uh, matches up with the paperwork as well, so uh, a common veterinary entry document can be issued. So there was minimum stress on the birds. We didn't even need to remove the uh, bird from the trapping container, so that's great. With the paperwork in order, the falcon can finally be handed over. Thank you. All right, have a nice day. Yeah. Yeah, bye. Right, that's one falcon. In the dog kennels, five-month-old Border Collie Kia from Australia is still waiting in a queue for her documents to be scrutinised. So I had a drink, had some food and been to the toilet, so it's all three things that we'd hoped for and it shows that they're not stressed. So yeah, we'll just leave her to it now, let her stretch her legs and rest. Hi! I can't, sorry, I can't get over how cute she is. Oh, <laughs> she's looking at me funny. Kia seems to be enjoying her stay. But out in the waiting room, Pete and Vonnie are keen to get home. It's been a long day, hasn't it? It has been a long day. Stressful. Stressful, yeah. <laughs> the vending machines have made a fortune. <laughs> this bit's even longer than yeah. the rest of the eight hours. Finally, Kia gets the all clear, and the excited couple ring their friend Danny, Kia's breeder in Australia, to share the big moment. She's nearly here. Just after six o'clock in the morning here. Hello. <laughs> Seem to be coming through. Oh, not no. no. It's be coming through that door. That door there. Can you see the door? Yes, I can see the door. First introductions over. Pete's already thinking about the future. Hey, little puppet. Yes, oh, we hope to have a nice, successful show career with her. But if it doesn't work out, she's going to be a, a family member for the rest of her life. She's going nowhere. She'll be looked after and treated like all the rest, spoiled to death. But we hope to do well with her in the show ring. Very, very happy. <laughs> Just a final three-hour drive to Lincolnshire before Kia's epic journey is over. Just want to get her home now, get her settled in and uh, get her a coat on. And a few weeks later, Kia's already feeling right at home. She's settled in really well, aren't she? Really well. Yeah, amazing. Uh, we got back at 11 o'clock at night on the first night and uh, she went to her bed, never heard another word from her. She's been well house trained, hasn't she? Yeah, she's the toilets been. and been really good. And, and mixing with the other dogs, she's been really good, been on walks. We've started training a small bit uh, for the show scene because obviously, you know, they've got to be stood, the judge has got to be able to go over her, got to be able to look into her teeth, look in her eyes, her ears, her shoulders, and virtually physically go over the dog. And she's good as gold, aren't she? Come on, come on. 
Supervisor Chris is checking up on the confiscated crustaceans that were seized by customs on a flight from Colombia. The long journey took a heavy toll, and just two of the 15 survived the trip. These are the two guys that are left. They seem OK, obviously not moving a lot, but being uh, tied up for that amount of time, being on two planes as well, uh, and then coming in here, they're probably just uh, resting up. They seem to be doing all right, obviously better than the others, because sadly their ordeal was obviously just too much for them. But these two, they seem to be up and about walking around, hopefully feeding. Um, we'll get some more food for them later. Also, they have been bunched up together, so one's one side, one's the other. I think they're just uh, having their own personal space at the moment. They'll be well looked after at the centre, but after that, they face an uncertain future. It's all down to customs now. Um, the rest have been labelled up. Um, they've, put in, they've been put into our freezer where they're uh, kept for evidence if there's anything to come of it. Um, but it's down to customs. Um, they can release them to us um, and then we can perhaps get involved with zoos and if they would like them, then, you know, happy days. But they won't, they won't go back to any public or anything like that. Got to keep them alive. Hopefully they're going to be eating, um, yeah, and hopefully they get stronger. But having done all he can, Chris knows it's still touch and go for the last survivors. The falcon was taken to a breeding project in the Midlands, where its owner hopes it'll contribute to the next generation of racing birds. Despite the Ark's best efforts, both of the remaining crabs died over the next few days. We, we tried, but um, yeah, just too far gone, unfortunately. But there's better news from Lincolnshire, where Kia's become the apple of Pete and Vonnie's eye. This is lovely, and we're looking forward to having a great life ever, aren't we? We really are.